Welcome back, Hallmarkies. We have four movies we're covering today. We're talking about Christmas, Festival of Ice, Perfect Christmas Present, Miss Christmas, and Christmas in the Air. Don't go anywhere. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to After Buzz TV. We are here doing Happy Hallmarkies. With this lovely, beautiful music. I was gonna say, is this the <laughs> softest intro to an after show I've ever been on, I think? Mm, maybe one of the softer ones, definitely. We have a lot to talk about. I'm your host, Marissa Serafini. You can follow me everywhere on Twitter at Serafini TV. Joining me is the lovely voice of Yes, it's Stefan Lovegrove, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Dr. Lovegrove. And shout out to those of you in the chat and in the comments. Lori saying hello. hello, and Lori, who is, I think, a moderator, if not the founder, of a Facebook group where all of you are discussing all of these lovely movies. Yes, she is one of the lovely Facebook admins that helps contain everything and all the craziness and, and the comments and everything that everyone wants to talk about in the Facebook. She she helps moderate all, all that, so great job, Lori. And everyone uh, who, who's a part of the Facebook admin group, you guys are amazing. We definitely appreciate all your hard work. Um, we have a lot to talk about. This show is going to be particularly covering the last new forced movies of the, the, the last four movies that we just watched and just aired on Hallmark Channel and Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. And so, so we have Christmas Festival of Ice, Perfect Christmas Present, Miss Christmas, and Christmas in the Air. A lot of Christmas. Overall, what were your thoughts of these four? Well, okay, first of all, I'm just so glad to be here with you, Marissa, and with you at home, um, because truly, I have always been such a geek for Countdown to Christmas movies. And I mean, I have watched them all religiously for the last at least two to three years. Um, so the fact that there are other <laughs> crazy Hallmarkies out there that we can sit and talk about them with just makes my life. In terms of this weekend of movies, um, I did not think it was as strong across the board as maybe we got our, we got off to a start. I thought Merry Me at Christmas Merry was Merry a very Christmas. strong start. Very I thought solid. this weekend was mixed. There was one movie I absolutely loved, saved on my DVR. We'll watch it three more times. There was one movie, it was a struggle. I watched it all the way through for all of you today. <laughs> but there was one movie that I struggled not to fast forward through or turn off. And then the other two I thought were good. One of them was more my style than the other, but the other two I just thought were good. So those are my overall leaving you hanging cliffhangers. Oh yeah, very tease, tease worthy. I'm still wondering which ones you liked and which ones you'd deleted. Well, and I'm we'll hoping say. that we disagree. Well, okay, yes, before we tell you, what did you all think? Let us know in the comments. How many of the four did you love? Were there any you didn't love so much? Let us know. Yes. So let's start with Christmas Festival of Ice, starring Taylor Cole and Damon Runyon. I'll just say, I'll start this off. I really enjoyed this one. I always enjoyed Taylor Cole and all the Hallmark movies that she's done. I really enjoyed this one. Did you enjoy this one? Is this one of the ones that you liked? I, I did not <laughs> like this movie. Okay, fair. Um, but, but I will say, that surprised me because I really like Taylor Cole. And we talked about Christmas in Homestead last week. Yes, we We did. love Christmas in Homestead. Uh, she's also from My Summer Prince, if you watch Hallmark Year Round. I love My Summer Prince. So I and love Taylor Cole. Yes. And I expected to like it because of her. Um, partly, though, I think in my head the whole time I was comparing it to ice sculpture Christmas. Okay. And that was Starting one of Rachel my Boston. Yes, who I really love. And I think that was one of my favorites of that year. So it didn't live up to that. And maybe I was just stuck in that comparison the whole time. Okay, that's interesting that you brought that up because a lot of people are going to make that comparison because I think that's what it's that too was, soon. It isn't five years only, out. It's yeah, two years. That was the only Hallmark I, I want to say that was the only Hallmark Christmas movie that had really took um, a topic with the ice sculptures. So it already set this tone of this is what the movie is about. It's all ice sculptures and training and teaching people and, and the art of the practice. And then, yeah, we're going to get another one that kind of has the same concept. But what I took away from this film 
I, I thought at the end of watching uh, Festival of Vice, it was so not like ice sculpture Christmas, and that's what made me happy because, yeah, people are going to make those comparisons, but I can completely separate the two. Because it has the same No, thing they were very different. The I was just contrasting in my brain the whole time. I liked the dynamic of Ice Sculpture Christmas better where they didn't know ice sculpting. And it was this new, fun they thing that she was learning and discovering. Mm -hmm. um, whereas in this one, they were pros. Yes. Um, I like that because it... It was more of a uh, commonality between the main two stars where they came together because they had the same similarities and it wasn't overcoming something and learning something and that whole learning curve that they had to go through. It was something that brought them together. One was already a passion growing up and it was something that she fought so hard for to get back because they canceled the actual event. So she, that, it meant so much to her that she raised the money. Good job on her $50,000. Well, and speaking of the money, I do want to say what almost redeemed the entire, maybe, we'll say it did. What really did redeem the entire movie for me was that conversation she has with her mom at the end. I thought that was very solid writing and very mm -hmm. solid acting. Um, maybe it was the most obvious plot twist in the world that I somehow missed, but I originally did not expect that it was her mom who donated. Um, and I just thought it was a beautiful conversation that her mom was like, I wanted you to have the, the chance to really decide for yourself and make a choice. So I did love that moment and that conversation and that, that did save it for me a little bit at the end. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. And then, uh, like I was going to say before, um, also the, the, so we had her passion for ice sculpturing, and then we had his. He had that passion, but he kind of lost it. it. It was something that was now sad memories for him, and it was something that made him happy again. He wanted to do it. He, he didn't really t want to talk about it, but then he her love sparked his love for it, and I, I really enjoyed that. And with, when you talked about the conflict that she has, the, every Hallmark movie has a conflict. I was surprised with this conflict because I really didn't see it. It was more of an internal conflict rather than an external one, which I thought was different from the, the general mold of what Hallmark structure is, is that internal conflict with Emma, that whether she wants to be an ice sculpture and like uh, doing things for the town was her passion or passing the bar exam, which good for her, but becoming a lawyer, what like, what are the two different career paths she could have chosen that would ultimately make her happy in the end? I thought this internal conflict was kind of surprising and didn't see her actually having issues with the law practice. Did, was that, you know, um, obvious well, to you? Did I miss something? Well, I thought it was obvious that she's clearly going to leave. I did think that was obvious. But what was interesting is, so many of you, if you've been with Marissa and After Buzz for, you know, prior to Happy Hallmarkies, you might have watched the Chesapeake Shores after show. Yes. And what was interesting is Connor left this really stale, awful law firm, right? In contrast in this movie, her law situation and with her mom and the opportunity to be partners, it wasn't a horrible situation. Yeah. She didn't have problems with her mom. She it wasn't a bad a work environment. Yeah. So it, you're right. It was a little bit different, more subtle of an inner conflict because it wasn't just some horrible, terrible job she wanted to escape. It just wasn't right for her. Yeah. But my inner business mind looks at, and I know that, that I just really need to leave that out of Hallmark movies, clearly. But I did see many people on social media discussing this. I don't know that ice sculpting was proven to be a viable career. And she leaves, that's what I couldn't get over with this movie, is she left her job for ice sculpting. And I'm like, did we prove that this is like a career that's sustainable for her? Right. Um, and that was also where I questioned too. Um, but I saw it not just ice sculpting as a career, but you know working and doing and like maybe setting events for her town you know giving back to her own personal community and like being involved in in just town affairs I saw more as that secondary career that she now wanted to do instead of law instead 
Right. Well, it, it definitely showed there was a passion inside of her that was not being recognized in her current job yeah. and that there was more that she wanted to do with her life. So obviously I'm going to root for anyone who ha who goes on that journey and finds that. I just, I don't know. Maybe I just can't get into ice sculpting. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I applaud anyone who can. It's such, it is an art form that it's underappreciated and you don't see it as much as... But can Someone you imagine should. the luck in terms of romance of finding somebody who understood and appreciated ice sculpting at that level? Like, mm -hmm. that's rare. Yeah, but I think that's also why the, the relationship was believable, that someone who already loved it, someone who did love it, but it wasn't as precious to him as it used to be. So, like, I believe that that brought them closer together and that they wanted to fight for this town event to now... Um, you know, performing, and I, I enjoyed it. This is a good point that somebody is saying in the chat of, I wish they showed more of the sculptures. I do feel like we didn't see that many of them. Okay, speaking of the sculptures, we actually have, if you guys are tuning in to the iTunes version, go check us out on YouTube. We do have some of the pictures that Taylor Cole tweeted out while she was live tweeting um, through her t Twitter feed. She has up close pictures of some of the sculptures, which I thought were pretty neat. I mean, look at this. Gorgeous. I mean, we have angels and and it's the, very intricate, the impressive art. Detail, like down to the furry hat, you know, the the furry ball and the end of a Santa Claus hat. I mean, look at that. And then that's you know, so impressive. It's it is impressive. I mean, there's like a big reindeer. You can see Taylor Cole's, you know, really enjoying it. There there were a few sculptures, and I believe there's also a picture where um, she had the writer and producers. There you go. Um, those who were involved in the production aspect of the film. Um, you can see them behind the scenes with the sculptures, and, you, and they are real life size. They're humongous. Is it real ice? Somebody's asking. It is real ice. It is real ice. Yes, it is. Um, but I mean, even just the the time and detail it takes. It is an art skill. So uh, I applaud anyone who can do it, and I believe. I really enjoyed the ice sculpture that they made that they won the actual competition, which was the, the memories one um, where we saw the, the building of the town back in the days when it first started. And I, it looked gorgeous. Um, but I, wh what did you think of the casting for this? Did you believe the chemistry between the two actors or just the, the, the casting of the parents? As well. well, honestly, <laughs> okay, so let me just preface my comments on this movie. I'm much more positive about the other three. Okay. Um, but let me just preface my comments by saying I do think it's a beautiful and really cool thing that we all process these movies so differently. I was joking with Marissa backstage before we went on air that yes. um, somebody online was like ratting on a very merry mix up and saying that awful movie with the fiance who goes to the wrong house. That is one of my top three all time favorites so I was I reading this one. post like well you're attacking one of my favorites but we all process these movies differently so we're all yes. entitled to different opinions uh, for me I think what happened with this movie is I do love Taylor Cole I didn't mm -hmm. like the male lead quite as much with her Game I didn't necessarily snake. feel that chemistry okay. um I, I ironically I wrote down Lonnie is cute why can't she date Lonnie um <laughs> But I think that was part of my issue is I, I just didn't love the male lead. I didn't love the chemistry. I still love Taylor Cole, and I still thought it was a beautiful moment at the end with the mom. Not my favorite movie of the weekend, though. What I loved was Brenda Cruson. She's an amazing actress who's been in so many things. I mean, you guys, go check her out. She has an amazing repertoire in her acting career. Um, I loved her in Saving Hope. Fantastic show. Um, go watch that one. Uh, I thought the the mother daughter casting was fantastic. They look alike. They were believable. Um, I really enjoyed it because there were moments where she she was being like motherly to to Emma, but there were also moments near the end when Emma was figuring out her internal conflict um, of that supportive mother too, who understood what her daughter was going through and gave her the opportunity and choice in, um, to, to decide things on her own, like a good parent should have for their children that they make their own decisions, um, life decisions like that way. I love the, the casting between these two and they need to be paired up more. And more Hallmark movies. Well, I love that. And you can tell the acting was good because I felt watching it the parental pressure of like, oh my gosh, she's gonna disappoint her mom. 
who really wants her to work there. And then it ended up being okay. And yeah, the mom daughter dynamic was phenomenal. All right. Yes. And before we move on, because we still have a lot. I know. <laughs> a lot so more much. Movies so many to movies. Talk about. Um, some fun facts about this particular one. Many of the extras in the movies were local residents. It was filmed in Elm. Uh, El Monte, Ontario, Canada, and that's actually the second film from Hallmark that they uh, also filmed there. They, the last one was Love on a Limb, that also was filmed in El Monte, Canada. Um, great movie. I enjoyed this one. This was one of my more favorite ones out of the four. I'm scared that the you're not gonna time. like my favorite, so right. I'm gonna need some support in the so, comments. So, moving on to our second film, which is The Perfect Christmas Present that aired on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. Your overall thoughts of this one? I loved it. Really? I loved it. And, and I know <laughs> that this is the unpopular opinion, because I saw a lot of people on Facebook were not feeling it as much. But this is why we're talking about Lori, did you like it? I felt like I saw Lori standing up for the perfect Christmas present. I okay. thought this was a beautiful movie and I loved it so much. I love the cinematography in this movie. Yes! It looked amazing. Lori loved it. Mary loved it. I'm not the only one that loved this movie. Okay. Okay. No, that's, that's What fair. were your thoughts? It's before fair. before we get in, what were your thoughts? Um, I, I liked Tara Holtz and Sam Page. I think they, they were great. I had a hard time. This was not actually one of my favorite ones. Clearly. Um, this is, <laughs> but I, uh, what I had a hard time with this film is the way it started and the way it ended. I think maybe for me, and I watch a lot of television and movies, and I, I'm the kind of person that needs everything like kind of clearly established first. If it's not, if it's like too convoluted, um, I might not be emotionally invested in it or just you okay. know, it, um, engage. The way that this film started, there was a whole narration of four different couples. I'm like, who are we focusing on? Who is our main protagonist? Of like situations that they were happening. Apparently they were receiving their gifts but it was just so fast where we were, t we're focusing on four different people. I'm like, okay, I'm already confused because I don't know who to pay attention to. Okay, that's so funny because I wrote down, I thought the intro was beautiful of the flying through the sky and all the different the people. Snowflake. But, okay, but I will say, I will admit, for about 90 seconds, I was a little confused and I was like, am I supposed to see... Other people love the beginning. It, Marissa, no, you're the odd one out. I'm I, kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, but my point is... I like I, the concept of the beginning. I don't think I, it was very clear cut. I was confused for about 90 seconds. Yes. Of I was like, I am I supposed to be memorizing all of this? Because I can't. Then when they said all of these people are basically clients of Tom Jacobs, then I realized, oh, okay. None of that is pertinent to the story. I, I don't have to know any of that. And then I ended up being okay. Hi, Lisa. Welcome to the party. Hi, Lisa, Lisa, did you love the perfect... Christmas present. Anyway, so I, but the intro was confusing in that sense. I will give you that. Yes, it was a confusing start, but fortunately I could figure it out <laughs> eventually what was happening. It's like, oh, okay, they're all receiving the perfect Christmas present. That was their own version, and it was because of this, our, our main man, our main per male protagonist. It took me a second. I had to go back and rewind it. I was like, did I miss something? But, but it also when I'm, showed the... When I'm three minutes into a movie, I should not already have to rewind it. That's what I'm saying. Okay, but it all, that's a picky note. But it also just... showed the duality of how he's creating these very emotional experiences for people. Mm -hmm. And then it pushed back to his life and said, but for Tom, it's all a job. And that was kind of the tension of the movie of like him is he really at peace with he is delivering this very emotional heartfelt gift but it's not really from the person and he's doing it as a job and is he really at peace mm -hmm. with that i thought it set him up as a character very well yeah it's like does does he enjoy what he's doing if he just sees it as a job does it really bring happiness to other people does it bring happiness to him and is it ethical? I mean, he had a moment right. in it where he, oh, well, Lisa, tell me what you think about it on Facebook or Twitter, because we are, Marissa and I did not agree on the first two movies <laughs> of what we thought. So you'll have to let us know. But that's what makes for an interesting conversation. Again. I that's know. That's why we're doing this. Um, okay. I thought the cinematography was great. And the story took place in Chicago. I'm actually from Illinois. I go to Chicago all the time. Um, 
So it felt like a little bit of home to me. I Why, loved the, all, all the, the Chicago we got yes, to see. All the landscapes and all the landmarks. I, I used to walk those streets every other day. Um, wow. So I, it, really, it really hit close to me. So it, you know, watching it, I enjoyed it. Because um, sometimes they'll set it in Baltimore or wherever, yeah. but you don't see Baltimore because it wasn't really filmed there. This one, there was tons of footage yeah. of Chicago, which this I made was, a note of. I really loved. Yes, this one was actually filmed in Chicago back in February of this year at the beginning of this particular year, 2017, putting a timestamp on this show. Um, yeah, and there were, there were just a lot of remarkable landmarks that you guys might point out, like the Marina City Building. It's like Short Drive, which I've been on many, multiple times. Um, I just I liked the location of it. It's it was a backdrop to the story, but I mean it's Chicago. It's a big city, but it is kind of a small town. So um, I liked it. What did you think of the whole um, event planning that Tom gets roped into? Well. I, th I just thought the way the story was set up was very fun and engaging. I mean, this was the one that I was the most, yeah, I guess I could say, on the edge of my seat for. Like, I was I was very engaged. Um, I felt for him being put in that awkward situation. Um, and But, you know, what was he going to do? At this point, he's agreed. It's a client. It's yeah. hard to say no to a client at times. I certainly understand that. Um, and so he ends up planning an event, which he's never done before and didn't intend to do. Um, I thought it was fun. I thought it was a fun premise. What did you think of the conflict um, when Jenny finally finds out who Tom is and what he does and that this was a whole setup from her, not fiance, but from her boyfriend at the time who wanted to be engaged to her, but the whole finding out of who Tom really is. How do you think they handled it? Um... I think it was believable because I wouldn't blame somebody in that situation for being very upset mm -hmm. and thrown off by that. Um, I think, you know, to me, the truth is really important to find out somebody is studying you. Right. It's not a comforting thought, even if it's like in a professional client gift giving kind of way. Researching. To find out someone yeah. is researching you on the DL is a little bit, I, I could get why you could be sketched out by it. Can I say I did love the... Um, the story about the fire yes. and the little foreshadowing okay. there <laughs> of the relationship tension that was going to erupt. I thought that was great. Did you like that fire romance story? Well, it wasn't a romantic story. It ended in a fire. <laughs> but do you know the actual fire, the sh great Chicago fire story? No. Oh, okay. That's not the story, I assume. That was for the movie. The, I mean, there... Based on, there's actually a historical event that happened. It was the Great Chicago Fire, where Lantern was arguably the, the biggest story out there. there. There's so many different versions, but the most popular version is that, um, uh, l ladies, I completely forget her name. I'm going back into my Illinois history growing up. But that there was a cow who knocked over a lamp that started the Great Fire that literally burned 100,000 plus homes and went on for like three square miles. Um, and so that's like the biggest problem, but uh, the biggest story of the Gra Great Fire. But they took the the story and changed it to a, f I don't want to say legend, but like a folklore kind of story now about it was actually a romantic type of tragedy to this story. Did you enjoy that, how they switched it up? I didn't, maybe because I'm just Because you're a Chicago Illinois, person. And I actually know the story. I just, you know, I, I thought it was a nice touch. I just thought there were so many nice things running throughout, like her charity work was a very nice touch. I like that, um, the non To charity. the story. And so the, she could have had another career or like work. And I just thought that was a nice touch. Um, I thought the whole blues thing was a very nice touch. The moment where his, the album was playing and she walked into the room, I thought that was just stunning as a moment. Um, I mean, you know, you guys know my thoughts. Clearly, I loved this movie. <laughs> I did like that because um, that was something that was nicely, subtly set up throughout the because it was more of a sentimental factor. She, she was now opening up about her personal life, about her family and her relationship with her father and what this music meant to her. And then he, Tom, you know, took the time to like find and track down this band that meant so much to her growing up. Now, what did you think of Paul? in terms of that character, how he was written, the acting, all of it. Did you think that was a believable, work-addicted boyfriend? I believe it. 
um, I I believe that he he wanted the best for his girlfriend at the time, but I and I totally saw that they were gonna eventually break up. It's like he doesn't of ca- course like because she, she's not a priority for him in his life. Work is so when and you the put the girl as number thing two, is real. It's not good. Yeah, the thing about like. This is what I had in mind for us. I've got, when he said, oh, I just cringed. Yeah. I don't know how you guys reacted, but when he said, babe, I've got big plans for us. I, I would just be so furious of like, and you didn't consult me? You didn't think we needed to discuss this at all? Yes, uh, I agree. Mary Boyfriend was engaged to his career. That's what I said. It's like he, his career was a bigger priority than his girlfriend. He wanted to do something nice, but the fact that he couldn't even find the quote unquote perfect Christmas for his own girl he had to hire someone else to do it clearly shows that she, he does not know her as a person what she likes what she believes in x y and z that's why they didn't work out but when you so i kind of thought that there was going to be a conflict between the friends now the paul and, and i know Tom, but i'm glad that was actually wrapped up because because usually realized, it doesn't get yeah, wrapped up like because paul realized that they probably weren't the best together um, Paul and Jenny. And I think good and on he, him he for coming that. around and being... For for him to recognize we're not great together, that's one thing. But for him to actually come around and support Tom being with her, yes. I thought was a very nice... Talk about a true happy ending there. Yeah, like, I liked that brotherhood because that could completely go against the bro code. Right. But it, Oh, he did. Oh, oh no. Tom broke the bro code. against the bro code. But, can but I, he was supportive of it. And can I say, I with this... Um, I just had a brain freeze. It <laughs> snowed over. Never mind. Go ahead. Okay. I don't remember. Um, overall, visually, I loved the look of it. It did not f- look like a typical harsh lighting of Hallmark movies in general. I, I, there was actual cinematography and cinematic value to this. So uh, can, do you know anything about this? If anyone did, I feel like you would know this. Some people were saying online it it felt and looked different than a normal Hallmark movie because it, it was a different production company that they just bought it at the last minute. I don't know any information on that. The feel was different, but what I was going to point out is I loved the piano score. Like, oh, there yeah. was there was Silent Night and all of these other Christmas carols, which is why we let in with it. But if you guys go back and watch it, or for those of you who haven't gotten a chance to watch it, um, there was the the most beautiful piano score incorporating all of these Christmas carols. That was really, I thought, the touch that made it just so over the top, an excellent movie. Okay, I'm looking it up. Thank you, IMDb. Um, for the perfect Christmas present, the filmography was a Sage Bell Films. There you go. That um, that overtook the, the which is not aspect. the usual. Um, they they haven't done. They've only had. A handful of movies. Um, they did Mr. Christmas, um, Road Less Travel, Forsaken Bottle. They're they're not as well known, but after this film, they're going to be well known. Um, so good for them. And Mar Vista helped distribute this film. But Lori's right. It did look softer. The colors seem different. I mean, it, I, maybe, I love the color palette of this film. What honestly stood out to me is, and maybe it's just my personality type, but watching this movie, having just watched Christmas Festival of Ice. I found the dialogue of Perfect Christmas Present to be so well written, so refreshing, so realistic. I was like, this all of these characters are believable. Paul is talking the way this character would talk. Tom is talking the way a Tom would talk. I thought the dialogue was also fantastic. I just really whoever made it, I loved. Yes, I thought the the, the dialogue was very conversational and very believable. Um I could understand that Jenny was uh like a quirky, nice kind of girl who didn't really know what she was doing, so she'd try to find help from anyone who was willing to to help her. I I I did like the character development in this particular film. And visually and again, the line with the right it. person it's painfully obvious. I loved that. Yes. Yes. Dialogue was believable. I agree. I agree. Um so here here's my little tidbit or well like if you like this film, it was filmed in Chicago. Um as a fellow Illinois 
person native to you. I'm not from Chicago, but I feel like I am. I practically grew up there. Um, I highly suggest if you're ever in Chicago, take the architectural tour. It's um, you learn all about the buildings of the, the major landscapes of Chicago. It's awesome. It's only an, an hour and a half. You get on a boat and go up and down the river. It's really cool. And it costs anywhere from 45 to $50, depending on if you go during the day or at night. At night, it's gorgeous. That's why it's a little bit more. But it's awesome. But it's worth and it. And you learn a lot. It's really cool. And you, and you learn the architectural structures of Chicago. So that's my little tidbit about Does it come that. with the pizza they ate on the movie? No. But if you are in Chicago, eat Luminati's. And they made a reference to that. I was like, I love Luminati's. So good. All right. Let's move on to Miss Christmas that aired on the Hallmark Channel. Overall thoughts of this one. Okay. This one I thought was just a very solid, well done Countdown to Christmas movie. It wasn't, it's okay. not gonna be in my top faves, but I also did really enjoy it. Um, I just thought this was solid. I just thought this was a, a very classic Countdown to Christmas movie. I liked it. I, I admittedly, I really liked the Hallmark movies and the, the movies and mysteries ones were the ones that weren't as strong for me personally. But I liked Miss Christmas. Well, that's and really that's liked... usually how I feel. Can I say the perfect okay. Christmas present threw me off because I agree with you on the Sunday night. And okay. typically, I'm always going to like the Hallmark one over movies and mysteries. I'm not trying to cry too much. Okay, okay. So <laughs> I enjoyed this one. I really liked Burke, Burke Dorsey and Mark Lucas. Um, I I believed that she 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 was so nice and so sweet, and she was good at her job, and she was willing to do anything to find the perfect tree. For, for the the lighting cer ceremony, what did you think of Sam's story, not wanting to let go of this tree that his son recommended? And, but there was a whole family sentimental value to it, and he wasn't willing to let it go. You know what it reminded me of is the a dynamic. I feel like it with the people who watch and listen to this show, they'll know the reference. It reminded me of Christmas Incorporated because I love the dynamic in movies Shanae when Rimes. somebody's in business and then we see the people side of it. Like they want to lay off a factory of people or whatever. Right. And then they see the people on the other side. That's kind of what this was is she's looking for a tree and it's her job and she really wants to deliver a good tree. And then, but there's people with like a sad story on the other side of it. And that's kind of what it reminded me of. And I love the stories about the people behind the business of things. Yeah. Uh, I, I agree. Lori Pearson, the sweater has to go. <laughs> what did you think of the ugly sweaters between? Okay. There were sweaters in both movies. There was. Um, both there was an actual... the Sunday night movies. It was ugly sweater <laughs> Sunday night. Um, one of them I sweater. actually liked. I don't remember which one it was, but there was one that I thought to myself I would wear. Um, but, but, I mean, they're definitely not extremely attractive. That's for sure. No, they weren't. And that's that was the point. I, I laughed at it. I got a good chuckle out of it. I really enjoyed the fact that Holly just came to Kloss, Wisconsin, Granted, this was the second film that kind of technically, quote unquote, took place in Chicago. And then they went to Wisconsin, another state that I currently always visit all the time, too. Uh, Midwest. Yes, I understood that, that vibe of it. Um, I liked the fact that Holly could just come to the small town and she assimilated so well into that family so quickly, just within well, the handful of days she was just The there. moment that I think it because there's always a moment where you're like they've really incorporated themselves into the family was it the family photo for you or what what moment did you really feel oh she's really a part of this family uh the first dinner when That's she was true. there and then the son just who was a fan of her because of television and what she does for her career who the, the young son who invites her into the home and she literally just walks through it like she she's been there before and then two seconds later they invite her to dinner and it just goes from there every single time she's with the family she's inside the house she's in their lives she's so a part of that family but it seemed natural it didn't seem forked it seemed actually genuine and and that's true because that goes beyond chemistry of two leads 
that was really all of them. The dynamic was really believable. That like, this is a family, acted very believably, and she's fitting in with the family. And uh, yeah, it was fun to watch. Yeah. That See, that harkens to a very merry mix-up. I love the movies where they meet the, the whole family and just... they really get to know the whole family. Yeah, I like I enjoyed that aspect too. And I, lo I love the fact that it wasn't so, yes, we'll let you have the tree. It was something that she had to work for and actually earn, like gain the respect of the family. But also she, there, there was that, that stake, that external stake that she had to her job. Like if she doesn't get this tree, she's gonna get fired and there's no point in coming back. But it was something that she generally, she just wanted to know the family, learn about them, be part of their lives. And if she doesn't get the tree, then so be it. That's not, it. It was only like two, three days later. She's like, if I don't get this tree, that's it. I'll just move here and actually be part of something, you know? Um, I, I like the fact that she actually had to work for, for this tree. It wasn't just given to her. She, she worked. And she it. almost lost it. She did. In the very dramatic truck driving away moment. <laughs> um, what did you think of now here's the conflict of this particular film, the overhearing of a conversation over the phone where he thinks that she's going to just get the tree and leave, leave the family after she spent so much time with them, just up and leave them. Well, I mean, it's one of those, I wish they would have, as always with the conflict, if everybody would just sit down and talk with it, <laughs> let's talk about it, we could resolve it. But I actually thought it was very believable if he had heard that part of that conversation in that way. I would have been upset too. And I thought that that was a very believable way for that to have gone down. It was a believable exchange, lost in translation. Right. Um, um, but I did like the, the fact that it was it was revealed two minutes later while she's in the car and he's about to or he's in the car and he's about to drive away and she actually tells him the truth like I know I was going to leave Chicago and come to class that she actually said it out loud which it that's, didn't use, that was unusual yeah it usually, usually takes, they don't clear it up till right. later it usually takes at least one more commercial break for them to actually come back together and then explain it well and sometimes another person explains it a yeah. family member calls and yeah. we did have There's a family a member call. Yes. Yes, we did. But that wasn't, it was already explained at the truck. Yeah, but I liked how he immediately was already put in his place and realized the error of his ways. And then she, so cut to the next commercial break, she finally comes back. And did you like the fact that they changed the location? Like, they didn't, they weren't going, she wasn't going to get the tree, but she's not going to move it either. They're now decorating the tree there in its rightful place. Did you like the point that the, they've changed it. Yeah, I thought the the tree arc, obviously the the interpersonal romance was the bigger storyline because it's a Hallmark movie, but I thought the way the tree arc unfolded was really nice. Yeah. I felt very satisfied with that It ending. looked gorgeous. And, and there was the whole thing where she's like, it's okay for her job, um, for, for Holly's job. She's like, it's okay if we don't get this tree. We have a backup. And we never saw the backup because that wasn't you know an issue anymore that's not something to focus on it was just this one main tree that has to stay where it always should have been i liked it they they brought the focus back to Klaus and not the radcliffe christmas lighting did that actual event it was sweet i actually enjoyed this film i you know i really think yeah i really think this was like if we talk about what is the formula of a countdown to Christmas movie, this had it all. Yes. All yes. the elements that you want, and it was just a very excellent movie. Yes, Mary also agrees. Jump to the wrong conclusion. Yes, that yep. that was the the whole con conflict. Oh wait, I had I wrote down quotes that I loved from this. All right. I loved the line from the mom who had passed away about oh. there's good times and bad times, but regardless, promise me that we keep growing. I loved her, Holly's realization about, I realized that what I want more than anything else is family. I loved the line, at Christmas time, we have to open up our hearts even when it's hard, especially when it's hard. Again, this is what, these are the yeah. elements that we want in a Countdown to Christmas movie. I thought this was so much stronger than the night before on that network. I loved <laughs> Miss Christmas. I loved Miss Christmas too. I watched this movie twice. <laughs> I haven't watched it twice yet, but I would, or watch it when it, re-airs because I liked it. Yes, I enjoyed this film uh, and here's a little bit tidbit about this one. This is actually based on the book, a digital novella series 
also by its titular name, Miss Christmas, by Gwendolyn Heasley. But she also has she has an actual different writer's uh, name. I believe it's called Gigi. Gigi. <laughs> I forget her last name. I'm sorry. That's a cool but, fact. Though. Yeah, she she has an actual writer's name that she she goes by. But her real name is Gwendolyn Heasley. Um, and she she actually sent the book to Hallmark and they had a film deal by April 2016. So this was already like a couple years ago or like a year and a half ago from now while we're filming this. And it was this episode <laughs> episode. This movie was directed by Mike Roll who has Directed episodes of Chesapeake Shores, Run Calls the Heart, Summer Dreams, and The Bridge. Oh, we The Bridge. We love The Bridge. Who doesn't? I mean, we should just do a show to go back and cover those two movies. So good. This movie, it takes place in quote-unquote Kloss, Wisconsin. Unfortunately, it's not a real <laughs> town in Wisconsin. I've been all over Wisconsin. I know it's not real, you guys. It was actually filmed in Vancouver. Um, in British Columbia, Canada, uh, also at Ladner Village. And so some filming locations was Ladner Village and 96th Avenue, Port Kells, which is, I believe, a, sorry if I get this wrong, I believe it's like one of the, the cafe restaurants. That's, that's the actual address of one of the locations that they used in this film. But it, it was filmed in Vancouver. Made to look like Wisconsin. I think it looked like it Wisconsin. Did. <laughs> it looked like the Midwest during Christmas. I believed it. I like this one. I I recommend it. All right. Let's move on to Christmas in the Air. Hallmark Movies and Mysteries starring Catherine Bell and Eric Close. Your thoughts on this one? Well, <laughs> that's like it's okay. There. Okay, so I watched. I didn't watch them in a row, but like within a thirty-six hour period, I watched all of these. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. So it was hard for me to know. Do I not like this one as much because this is my fourth in a row, or is it just a weaker movie overall? This one was not my favorite. Um, I didn't hate it. It wasn't terrible. It just it wasn't my favorite. But I also couldn't help partly because of Catherine Bell, maybe. But I couldn't help have the feeling this is going to air a lot yeah. in years to come. I feel maybe because it's a toy maker. Maybe because it's Catherine Bell. I don't even know all the reasons. But I I really have the feeling this one is going to air a whole lot. So maybe I'll learn to love it. <laughs> um. I liked this film. I thought it was cute. It was not my one of my favorite ones out of the four that we covered. I it had I its did moments. Believe, yeah, I did believe Lydia and Robert to each other. Um, I believe that his life was a chaotic mess. He needed help with his kids. He seemed like a good, genuine guy who cared about his work, but also equally cared about his kids. And we just talked about a film where the man just only cared about his work. So, like, I, I like the fact that Robert, like, he had, his heart was in the right places at the right time when they needed to be. Um, I like Eric Close. He's great. He's a good actor. Too. And I liked Lydia's character being a strong, not a workaholic, but not also the frazzled, disorganized, like ditzy girl. She was like a strong, she's good at what she does. She's a professional. I like that organizer. she was like a professional woman, good at her job, good at what she does. I liked her character. Yes, she was a professional organizer. My other co host, James Lack Jr., is a self proclaimed professional organizer. Um, he would enjoy this film, and he also likes Catherine Bell. Uh, there I, you go. I believed that that Robert needed someone in his life to just like help him slow down. Sometimes you need that person to like just open Which your Paul eyes. Which Paul could have for used you. her as well. Yes. Yes. Really, more than sure. the gift giver, Paul from the Perfect Christmas Present could have benefited from someone helping him slow down. Yes, exactly. So uh, I like the fact that you know sometimes in life when your life gets too crazy, you always have that one person that kind of makes you like take a moment to realize what's around you, and that's what Lydia was towards him. Um, what, what did you think of the the conflict though? The not at the end where. Uh, where Robert was finally getting a hold of separating his work life to his personal life, but in the end still marrying the two together. Like, he, he couldn't find that separation. See, okay, to me, I didn't like that conflict, nor did I think it was as believable as the Miss Christmas one, because with that, I was like, 
it, even if this is her job, couldn't she ask a simple question and say, why are you working the night before your dinner? And he could mm -hmm. say, oh, because I was put in this position by someone who promised that we're going to have a new idea for them tomorrow night at dinner. Like, I, I felt like there was a logical explanation and that I guess all conflicts, if there's a lost in translation issue, they could have been avoided. But particularly that one, I didn't like that as a conflict. So people are saying uh, they would have a hard time having someone go through their personal things. That I agree. Now, wait, why is it not believable that Robert would have the money to afford her services? Is, are we, was he not supposed to be doing well financially? Was it not, well, I think the, the whole, the, the big thing for, for that Trent toy business was that they were finally getting an investor because they were just creating things out of that's passion. That's true. They weren't making that, money. I, that's a valid point. So they, it could be that like, like they're, they're working well, but they're not making any money. Therefore, by extension, he probably couldn't afford an organizer. But money, let's be clear, money doesn't really, with personal shoppers, with any of these things, mm -hmm. oftentimes in Hallmark movies, money doesn't really exist. We just ignore it. Because <laughs> they've got to hire someone for the leads to meet each other. So yeah. sometimes you just kind of ignore it in these movies. They're, they're a little, I would, I'd like to say they're meet cute in the, when they were shopping and they first meet each other, and he's so busy in on a phone call meeting that he writes on her organizational whiteboard. I was like, ooh, if you touch my stuff, no, red flag. But that's me personally. But I did enjoy that because that's how they had, they had to clash with each other. Their busy right. lives had to clash with each other. That's the only way that they would cross paths. So that I found believable. That's true. I don't know. I Someone, Lisa, said we were just discussing in the Facebook group, sometimes we like a movie better the second time we watch. That is very true. And that was mm -hmm. my experience with One Starry Christmas, which is now one of my all-time favorites. I liked it more the more I watched it. That's queued up on my DVR to record tonight. <laughs> Please let me know how it is. But uh, that may be the case, Lisa, and others who were discussing that, because if I watch it not as the fourth one in a row, I might be seeing it with more fresh eyes. Okay. Yeah, that's that's fair. Um, what I loved about this particular one were like they, there were moments where they were talking to each, to each other, and you can just believe their crazy lives, and they forget to to breathe. And then there there was moments where I think I just related very well to Robert because he's a creative person who's busy, who doesn't focus on things when he should. Um, and he he has one of the best lines like you can't organize creativity, and I so believe that because creative people are messy you guys creative people are messy <laughs> and you know what i thought about his I'm studio messy. workspace is like to a degree is it really hurting him the way he has it laid out most no. artists i know and designers have spaces like that yeah and he said one of the lines like like i know where everything is and that's all, all that right. matters that, I mean, sometimes that does as albert einstein perfectly says you know if uh, empty uh, if a cluttered mind is assigned uh, or if a cluttered desk is a sign of a mind what is the clutter i completely butchered this quote but what then is a sign of an empty desk you know is that a sign mm. of an empty mind i you know it goes along those lines i agree it takes me 10 seconds to mess up a desk if anyone knows me my work space is completely crazy every single day i believe that so that doesn't mean you're disorganized just in life it's just you're creative you're not those aren't priorities for him right and so he had someone to help make that kind of a priority to get his life somewhat back on track. I, I just, you know, I recognize Robert in so many ways than one. Um, this movie was directed by Martin Wood, who also has done Chesapeake Shores, Aurora Tea Garden movie, Summer in the Vineyard, and The Perfect Bride, Love Locks, and yeah. What a good list. Yeah, I mean, he, he's done a lot. And of course, Catherine Bell's just a Ben and everything of Hallmark, Good Witch, everything. I, I literally have in my notes just everything. <laughs> but so this this was not one of your favorites, but my favorite two journey? were Miss Christmas and the Perfect Christmas Present. And those of you who watched them all in the chat or in the comments, let us know what your favorites were. Lisa, I agree. I, I told Marissa she's only watched it once, and I told I her she needs one. to watch One Starry Christmas again. And for the person earlier who asked what are our favorites, I didn't want to derail the discussion, but there's one of them. Yes. One Starry Christmas. Stacey Matthews, we got it, Marissa. Good. I'm glad you do. All right. <laughs> so here, here's my Marissa movie suggestion of the week. If you love the Perfect Christmas Present, just the about the opening because you know my 
It wasn't my favorite opening, but if you did love the opening, you'll probably love the movie Age of Adeline. It has the same type of opening with the voiceover, the exp literally the detailed explanation of what happens um, with the weather and how it affects the certain person and life starring Blake Lively. Go see it. It's a beautiful film, you guys. Um, I, I loved Age of Adeline. I've seen it probably 10 times. Uh, it has the same type of narration. It's beautifully shot. Um, great actors in it. Go watch it. <laughs> and then all the other Hallmark movies that we have dropped in this particular conversation. <laughs> all right. So those were our four movies. We, of course, we have a lot more movies to discuss. Our upcoming four movies for next week, you guys. So we're starting with The Sweetest Christmas that will air on the Hallmark Channel. Um, starring Lacey Chabert, Lara, uh, Laura Gilchrist, Jonathan Adams. It airs Saturday, November 11th at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we also have, thanks to our good friends over at Crown Media and Hallmark, we have a special preview clip for The Sweetest Christmas. I'm really excited to show you guys because this is very, very special. And watch. I'm very excited for yes, this movie. Yes, go. And so here is the special preview clip for you. Why do I feel like I'm a kid who's being called into the principal's office? That's because you are. Listen, um, before your dad died, he asked me to look after you. Well, I don't need looking after. I'm a grown man, man. I, I got work to do. Okay. But just, just answer me one question. Make it a fast one. Why are you giving Connie such a hard time about the contest? I want her to trust her talent. I don't want this to end badly for her. Okay. Well, how about you clarify something? That's two questions. All right, all right, um, I think you're anxious. I think you're scared that once the contest is over, you won't see Kylie again. Oh, come on, man. No, no, you come on. And you're crazy about her. I can see it in your face every time you say it, man. You, you want me to take a poll of the kitchen staff? What are you waiting for? Tell her. I wanted to, like, a hundred times. I just, I don't want to be that guy. What guy? That guy who thinks... This time, it's going to be different. Well, are you kidding me? If people didn't think this time is going to be different, they would never go on a date. You can call my wife and ask her. Our whole marriage is based upon those words. Those words should be engraved in schools and churches. Why? So we can get people's hopes up? <laughs> Do you want to live a life without hope? Yeah. 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 Oh my goodness. I have chills from the clip. I mean, just... what a what a Hallmark movie. I'm already ready for I was already ready for this, but yes. I'm even more ready for it now. Just this minute and a half watching we didn't even get Lacey, who's the main star of this particular film, but like a sincere conversation between the men. And I think that's what Hallmark does a great job of establishing strong protagonists. Um, male protagonist, but you have it seems like a very healthy relationship between these these two guys who good friends giving each other good relationship advice. Yes, I'm so already good. set for that. So that's the, the sweetest Christmas, you guys. Again, that's on uh, starring November, sorry, uh, airing November 11th. So go check that out. The next film is A Song for Christmas on the Hallmark Channel Movies and Mysteries um, starring Becca Tobin also she's amazing in Glee and Kevin McGarry that airs Saturday November 11th at 6 p.m. Pacific I think I'm going to like this one even though it's Movies and Mysteries I think I'm going to like it Eastern. I'm going to like this film because it's country music and I love country music no matter what it is I'm very biased I love country music and they're singing. I'm already set for that one. So that's so that's that one. And then we have Enchanted Christmas on Hallmark Channel, starring Alexa Panavega and her husband Carlos Panavega. That airs on Sunday, November twelfth. Uh, uh, yes, November twelfth at five p.m. Pacific Standard Time, eight p.m. 
Eastern Standard Time, Enchanted Christmas. And then, of course, last but certainly not least, I think uh, so many people are excited for this one, Engaging Father Christmas that airs on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries, starring the lovely Erin Krako from When Calls the Hearts. Hey, all the Hardys know her. Um, Love her. And Niall Matter, who is also just in When Calls the Heart and other Hallmark movies as well. That airs Sunday, November 12th at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9 p.m. Eastern. And we also have another special preview clip for this particular film as well. So, Hardys, go crazy. I'm excited to show this to you guys. Let's do it. Did you ever hear the story of how we bought this cottage? James had just been cast in his first Broadway show. I don't even remember the name of it. But he had a day off, and we wanted to get out of the city, so we took a drive. How we ended up here in Carlton Heath, I will never know, but uh, we fell in love with it and with this cottage. So you bought it? Oh, heavens no. We couldn't afford it then. <laughs> but the show had a good long run, and there were other shows, and eventually we scraped together enough for a down payment. Now, this was our very first real home. It must have been wonderful. No, we spent more and more time here. And it was wonderful in every season, but something about Christmas. Christmas was the most special. Awesome. Also starring Wendy Malick, who's fantastic. I actually interviewed Robin Jones Gunn, who was the writer to Finding Father Christmas and Engaging Father Christmas last year. Go check out our amazing interview on Book Circle Online. She was fantastic. And that interview, she got real and emotional, and it was just she's such a sweet lady um engaging father christmas the the very anticipated film uh sequel to finding father christmas starring aaron Krako. everyone's excited i'm so happy to talk about these films Whew, we talked about four of them look at that and we, we just sure have did. four more next week and we also have a special guest next week hardies we have your lovely and a good friend, a good, sincere, close friend um, of mine that I can proudly announce for, for next week that you guys might know of, Jordan Blackstone, the amazing painter and photographer. She has given me a canvas painting that's gorgeous. Um, you go check out our Ben Calls the Heart after show um, here at After Buzz. She, she painted something amazing for me. She's so super, incredibly God-given talent. And I'm so happy to have her on our show for next week. And she's going to be talking about her artwork, how she's involved in the Hallmark community, and what Hallmark means to her. So, you guys, we have Jordan Blackstone next week, along with the other movies that we'll be talking about. And uh, my co-host, my other co-host, James Black Jr., James. will be joining once again because, you know, I mean, if it's anything when it calls the heart related, he, he's going to definitely join in on us thanks everyone for tuning in uh so many great things to talk about and i enjoyed as always talking with you uh stefan in the meantime rick and everyone keep following you yes uh twitter and instagram at dr love grove and i should be releasing my annual christmas playlist as of this Friday or Saturday. So I'll make sure to share the link. Christmas playlist, where is it available? Is it iTunes, is Spotify? Um, Apple and Spotify. Okay. Um, and I will post it on Facebook, but I will put the link up on Twitter as well for everybody there. But it's 100 songs. I re refresh it every year, and I'm, I'm just so excited. I'm excited. I was literally listening to Christmas music in the booth while I was preparing all of our shows today. It just so puts I you in an energy. Music. And countdown yes. to Christmas on the TV, it just works. Yes, I'm, I'm so happy to have this show and talk about all these Christmas movies with you, with all you hearties and chessies and goodies and hallmarkies. That's why we do this. We we really do and love this show. Um, thanks everyone. You can follow me on Twitter at Serafini TV. Keep following all of us here at AfterBuzz at AfterBuzz TV on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all those fun social media platforms. We have so much, so many movies to talk about now and we will see you next week. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. 
To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.